Shit.
Hi, 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 everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are joining in from. So, um, I think we would have to start now. Yeah, thank you, everyone who joined. So, I think the judges are still joining. We have uh, Mr. Olumide. Hi, Olumide. Great to have you here. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, great to have you here. Thank you for making our time to attend this session. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much too, for giving us the opportunity. Okay. Okay. So um, I think we have a couple of the startups here. So startups that are pitching today. Right. So um, I will call you guys. So you sort of um, answer your name, answer your father's name. So let's know that you are here and you are ready for us. So we have um, Kiddies Club. Kiddies Club, are you here? Yes, That's I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Yeah, good morning. Good to have you here. So, Thank you so much. I think what we have to do, every startup that are, um, every startup that is going to pitch today, so just give us your name, your startup name. You already know yourself, those that were invited. Um, Kiddies Club, Anaya, Astora, Finn Paddy, Jack Bar, Sundry Agro, Lega Roots, IG Closet, Powerful, Astro, um, Zendit, BitR, OMZ, and Tralalion AI, Trade Hunt, and Mid Drone. So if you guys are here, introduce yourself, your startup name, so that I tick um, you guys' name. So anyone can start. Guiani, you can start. Anyone can start. Let's make it. Okay. Good morning, everyone. All right. Good morning. Hi. Oh, okay. My name. Okay. Can you hear me? Good morning. Okay. So everyone. wait. A, a lot. Um. A quick. A quick housekeeping. If you are not speaking, please um mute your mic so that you don't disturb others. So if you are not speaking or you are not called up to speak, please mute your mic so that you don't distract others. And then um, let's just have the introduction first so that we are sure you guys are here before we continue any other thing. So um, Emmanuel, I think you are trying to speak up. All right, thank you, Mr. Pascal. Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. My name is Emanuela Arema, and I'm at the CEO at Kids Club. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Emanuela. Next person. Uh, good, uh, good morning, morning everybody. everybody. Okay, Guillermo, you can speak up. Okay, good morning, everybody. I am Guillermo Ephraim Mzuli. I'm the founder of Trade Hunt from South Africa. I'm here. Okay. Um, who is next? Good morning, everybody. Okay, Ruth. Yeah, my name is Ruth Uehai Creepy. I'm the founder of Legal Root Solutions. Okay. And I'm here for pitch for pitch. Yeah. Next person. Hi everyone. Good morning. My name is Julius Ejidola, and I'm the founder of Fame Party. And I'm right here in Lagos, Nigeria. Okay, Fame Party, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Next person. Okay. Hello, good morning, good morning everyone. Okay, Abdul Jalal. Oh, yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah, good morning. My name is Abdul Jalal. I'm the co founder of Astora, um, based in Abuja, Nigeria. Okay, next person. Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Ayomide Samson. Samson, we can I'm hear you. Lead for Beat Out Technologies based in Abuja and Lagos, Nigeria. Samson, from yes. where? Good morning. My name is Ayomide Samson. I am the Beat Out Technologies. 
Okay. I'm the founder of Beach House Technologies in Abuja and Lagos, Nigeria. Okay. Next person. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, Michael, can we have you? Michael Ishoko, can we have you? Hi, good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael. I'm here in, uh, in Nigeria, Abuja Precise. I'm a, a co-founder of MIT Drone. Okay, next person. Okay, um, I'm Abiyadon Falomo, uh, co-founder of Zendi Technology. Okay, then the next person. Okay, my name is Zola Itoni Mide. Um, from the Business School, Nigeria, Ogun State. Thank you. Okay, Ola is one of the judges. So, startups we have here. Here is Owen um, from Japa, Abuja, Nigeria. Okay, Owen, Japa. Who else? If you're a startup and you are pitching today, please can you um introduce yourself? Okay, for now we don't have um Anaya here. We don't have Sundry Agro. Okay, IG Closet, Powerful, Asoro, OMZN, and Trala Leon. Trala Lion or Trala Lion, anyone. So, um, once again, good morning, everyone. You are welcome to the first pitch event um, for the Inspire Pre Demo Day preparation. So, as you already know, you guys are not new to here to this. Um, um, particular startup event. We've gone through um, the two cohorts, cohort four and five of the IDH program, where we trained our startups on the basics and the foundational aspects of growing a business from the scratch. All of our startups have gone through the training for a period of five weeks, and they still had some time to build um, some traction, um, have some mentorship session with um, experts and professionals we brought on board to help them. And it is through this um, endeavor and the trainings that we've selected the top startups out of those that applied. We selected, I think, um, 16 or 15 to be able to pitch. So at the end of this session, we are hoping to pick just nine or 10 of them to move to the next stage, which will be on Tuesday. And after the second pitch event, we are picking the top five that will be moved to the final stage, which is the demo day. So all of our startups pitching today, I wish you guys good luck. So before we start, uh, we have um, some of our facilitators already here. We have our ever able and energetic Chukubike Felix. Hi, Chukubike. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning from here. Uh, it's happy. I'm happy to be here, and uh, I, I hope uh, we are all happy. I'm all already excited to be here. Thank yeah. you. Great to have you here. So we've already introduced Olumide. So we would um, have to um, start very soon while we are waiting for others to join. So as you already know, this is the first stage of the pitching. After this, you have another one on Tuesday and then the final one um, which is the demo day. And as you received via your email, you are supposed to have three minutes, but then we've increased it to four minutes. So four minutes to pitch, and then three minutes for questions from the judges. Also, if you are not speaking at a particular point in time, 
we please beg you that you mute so that you don't distract others. Then it is worthy of note that this is a learning platform. Building a startup is a journey, right? So even if you don't scale through this stage or you are not invited to speak, learn as much as you can learn from this session. A lot of people build businesses, like you need to build, if you ask those that, are, that have succeeded in businesses, some people build like one, two, three, four, five or 10 businesses before they actually build better ones that existed at million dollar or billion dollar mark. So we know that some of you here are just um, among the startups, but you were not invited to speak. So observe, know where you missed out, right? And learn as much as you can learn. Then for the startup speaking, please endeavor to take feedback from the judges. They might sound hard, they might sound um, strict, but we are all here to help you. So even if you don't make it through this stage, it means there are a lot of things for you to learn. So go back, edit, iterate, and get things going. Improve on your startup and all. Because as long as you are a startup and you are a portfolio startup, we keep sending you opportunities, opportunities for you to apply, opportunities for you to grow, and other opportunities for you to be able to move your startup to the next stage. So um, we are going to start now. So startups, if you are here and we mark your name, please get ready your presentation decks. If you want us to display your deck, we'll surely do that. But then once we call you, um, you have to present with your deck. So um, let's give you guys number now. So keep Kids Club, you'll be going first. That's Emanuela. Astora, you'll be going second. Then um, Fimpadi, third. Jabba, fourth. Lega Roots, fifth. Um, Zendit, sixth. Beach R, seventh. Trade Hunt, eight, Meat Drawn, ninth. So as others come in, we fix them up. Once again, make sure you're listening. Take the feedback both from your own session and from others' presentation. Make sure you keep to time so that we don't stop you. It's not about the multiplicity of words you use. Go straight to the point. We've already taught you what you need to give a good pitch for your startup. Go straight to the point. So um, I hope you guys are getting ready. So we have um, some of our facilitators who just joined while I was speaking. We have the person of um, Mr. Abiola Jimo. Hi, Abiola. Great to have you here. Abela, can you hear me? And we also have Mr. Um, I think we have a couple of people that join. We also have Mr. Tiodo Longi, one of the judges for today. Hi, Tiodo. Great to have you here. I hope you guys can hear me. If you can hear me, please um, raise up your hand. If you can hear me, Emanuela, can you hear me? Emanuela, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. Not Emanuela, do, but I can confirm. Okay. That I can oh, yes, you. I can hear you. Sorry. Okay. I was okay. having issues with my. Uh, I was trying to.
So, okay. Emmanuel, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Emmanuel, your time starts. You are putting on your slide, right? Yes, I am. Okay, so you can put up your slides now. So, other people that are pitching, please get your slides ready. Please, can you see my slide? Yeah, sure, we can. Okay, so good morning, everyone, and thank you once again for this opportunity. My name is Emanuela, I'm a co founder at Kids Club, and we officially started in February this year. And so, I'll just go quickly through the slide. So, why we started Kids Club is that we noticed that especially here in Nigeria, most children are having issues assessing affordable digital classes and also to acquire resources such as laptop and learning materials. And then we decided to start Kids Club. So please, I will just roughly go through the next slide. Please let me know if you can see the next page. Okay, so this is the problem. So we're not that many children do not have access to the right resources and also to acquire laptops and other learning resources due to high cost of living. And then at Kids Club, we decided to offer an interactive platform that is affordable for children between the ages of six to 15 years. And for those who are not able to afford this digital training, we offer them scholarship through partners and through institutional bodies. Okay, so this is a demo of our product. So what we do is that when you, for children between the age of six to 15, when they come to, when they visit our website, they get to sign up and we assign them a virtual class where they are given resources and assigned to an instructor who monitors their, program, their progress for a specific period of time. So currently our target market are children between the, between the ages of six to 15 and our current location is Nigeria and we, in the future tend to expand to other black communities and Africans in diaspora. Okay, according to a 2000, 2021 research by the UN, we noticed that there are children between the ages of zero to 15 years, 569 million children. And our target market is 40%. The 40% means the ages fall between six to 15 years. And those are our target market. So these are competitors, Tinker, Code, Kingdom, and Robo Wudakin. And we noticed that for this platform being listed here, they only focus on technical training. So for, for Kids Club, we decided to infuse other learning curriculum, such as soft skills, team dynamics, and creative skills, which is being listed here. So these are competitive analysis. So we focus on, aside being assigned them a virtual class, we also focus on live interactive classes with our students, which happens every Friday the schools and institutions for live classes and we'll also have live boot camps and training for those children that need physical attention. Okay, so our competitive approach is that most we notice that some of our part, some of our competitors, their classes are not personalized. So most of them, when we went through their website, we noticed that some of them they already recorded classes already, and we tried to limit that on kids club. Yeah, but even when you go to our website and you sign up for a virtual class, we also have an instructor who is there to monitor you, who is there to track your record and also to monitor your progress. And these are our marketing strategies. So we tend to achieve the 40% of the 569 million children in Africa through advertising, social media campaign, affiliate marketing, influencer marketing, email marketing, and so on. And these are our team. I am the CEO and also have uh, Mr. Maka, who is the Chief Product Officer. We also have uh, Mr. Marvelous, who is the Director of Learning. And we have Mr. Kayo Day, who is an advisory board. And to add to it also, our uh, method of getting revenue monthly is through monthly subscription. When parents come on our platform to sign up their children, they get to pay a monthly fee. And also we get our revenue through partnership with schools, secondary schools and primary schools, where they get to pay for three months for the session. And also we, 
we partner with companies and institutional bodies to sponsor a child. And we do this through international, um, international and institutional partnership. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emanuela, for the presentation. So um, our judges, I don't know if you have questions for the for this startup. Please, any of the judges can speak up, please. Any questions for this startup? All right. Um, um, good. Uh, good. Uh, um, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Theodore Longji. I am one of the judges. So, um, first, quick question for the presenter. Um, so, uh, have you gone live? You, you, do you have an MVP, or is this? Is this platform, is it live? Emanuela, the question is for you. Oh. Yeah, can you hear you? Oh, oh, you already have existing users. Yes, and we have a live website. Okay. So I, a quick one again. Um. Apart from the analysis where you're able to look at the competitors, those who are operating in the same space with you, um, uh, what, are, what were the other methods you used to ensure um, validation so that you're not just um, wasting your time or that you have sufficient enough customer base um, or people who will, um, as first adopters, who will just naturally um, just um sign up on the platform and um i, I just want to know um one of the okay, methods sorry, Mr. Chidera, please can you go again i couldn't hear yes. you at the point sorry so okay so i was saying that um what what are the methods or what were the methods you used to validate this need um um so that you are not wasting time and resources uh, to build something that people do not really want. Even though uh, you're able to identify those who are also operating in the same space with you, um, who are already probably in the market, who probably have done so much and are, are, are probably um, utilizing the large chunk of um, you know, the customer base. So you as a new person who is just coming into this space, um, what were the things you did apart from uh, just okay? I know this person is in that in this space. Uh, okay, those those people um, operating the same space. You, you've mentioned them on your deck. I saw quite a number of them on your deck. So, what were other things you do to ensure that okay, uh, that forty percent, right? Um, yes. How much of it? Yes. Uh, do you think with your strategy? Uh, that you have deployed, how, how much of that 40% do you think you will be able to have, you know, at the, end, at, at the end of the day? And then what are those strategies to ensure that you keep growing your database in terms of customers? Okay. Okay. So I will just start from here. So initially when we started in February, we decided to test the market and we decided to run a scholarship program. Sorry about the noise from my background. So we decided to run a scholarship program and uh, we put the word out there through social media campaign and through word of mouth. And we just needed just 20 children between the age of six to 15. And the turnout was really a lot because we had over hundred participants and we had to just select only 20. And from that 20 number of children, we had people that are still with us till now that are paying, although they are not a lot. Then also as regards your question, how we can, chunk into the market of the 40% 40, uh, 40 of the 569 million children in the world. We plan to do that through marketing, heavy on marketing. And aside that, we, we are trying to, we are working on a partnership with an animation company. So what they do is that 
they provide animation content like reading materials, videos, games for children. And we are currently working on the partnership. So what we are trying to do is that we're trying to provide these free publications, free materials to children that, uh, that come in, our, in on our platform to register. Either they are paying or not. So we're trying to like get, draw these children to us by promoting publications because we know that children really love animations, right? And this is one of our strategy that we're trying to get this and to increase our database and our customer base as we can start. Yes, so aside just the normal classes, technical classes, we also have other packages like the animation, releasing of animation content for free for our partners, for our school and institutional partners and our users that come to sign our platform. So we are giving to them for free every month, new publications. And as regards, as, aside that, we also have um, creative classes, team dynamics, which is separate from the normal classes that they have. So we are using these mechanisms to draw them and to make us stand out from other platforms that are just um, providing technical classes or digital classes for these children. So we're trying to have like a balance and all around curriculum. And we're also trying to build a solid community for these children. Yeah. Okay, one last question. Uh, so what were the metrics uh, from when you launched to now? Uh, how many, um, what, what was the number of uh, students that signed up on the platform? And then what are the metrics you're looking at to measure success? Okay, so... Uh, after the scholarship, we had, although they are not really a lot, but we have about six children that have been with us for six months, and we have more children that are coming in. So we currently major our success rate due to recurring payment, like for our existing users, those that come back again and register, and also um, our page visitors, our monthly page visitors, but basically our front liner for our metrics is our continuous payment from these existing customers that we already have. Okay, thank you, Emanuela. Good luck. Thank you so much. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Olamide, you have a question. Olamide. Yes, I just want to ask. Um, uh, sorry, uh, how much, if I, if, we, if we have to subscribe, how much do you charge? How much is your subscription? Okay, currently our subscription now is 15,000 and our pa. classes are every Saturday. Yes. Pa. 15,000 per month, 15,000 per month. 15,000, 1, 15,000, 15, not 50, 15. Uh, uh, 15,000 per what? Is it per month? Per, per month, no, per month, every month. Is a monthly month. subscription, yes, per child. Okay. Okay, so how many and users? Okay, only that you can finish up. If I, uh, I, I just want to ask you regarding the users now. Now, um, you okay? You said you have just six people, right? Six. Um, that are like six people that active. are constantly on our database, but some months we have like eight or ten students, but. The students that have been constant, that have been paying, we have about six for the past six months. That was since May this year. Okay. For those that are not paying constantly, what actually, did you actually get any feedback on saying, okay, maybe these are okay, the yes. challenges as well? So when we, run, when we ran the scholarship that we had about 20 children, initially our prize was, initially our prize was 31,000 and we had a package for 25. So when we Shout out to the parents. Some of them, they had like three children, four children, and some of them, they uh, they complained about the price that they couldn't afford it. So we had to review the prices that will be beneficial to us as a team, and also that is that our customers are able to afford. And aside that, some of the parents they 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 opted for a physical class. Most of them. So we are also working on that to get a physical training location here in Lagos to accommodate more of our users. But also notice that aside from the prices, we notice that 
when we run ads like campaign, we notice that some of the feedback we get from some of the parents is that they need a physical class where their children can go and learn. Yes, yeah, so we are working on that also. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you very much. I think um, you've really taken a lot of time, um, um, Emanuela. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So we have the next person, Astora. Astora. Yes, good morning. Yes, I want to share my screen, but um, Emanuela, please, could you? Okay, Emanuela, stop? please, you can stop sharing your screen so that Astora can come up. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Could you? Uh, can you all hear me and see my screen? Yes, sure. We can see that. All right. Good morning. My name is Abdul Abdujalal Lubakar. I'm the co-founder of Astora, and our mission is to revolutionize the lending market by fostering transparency, accessibility, and efficiency. Our vision is to create. A, a space, a world whereby access to credit is easier, both for the lenders and the borrowers, make providing transparency across all board and increasing rate of returns for the lenders. The problem we've noticed is there's a high in developing market like Nigeria, there's a high uncertainty in the lending market due to lack of informed data, which makes it hard for decision making credit buyers and inequality, making it uh, difficult to access credit, predatory lending practices and poor debt collection. We all here have experienced something similar. It's fair money, pan pay, calling you, harassing you, or even going as far as slander, which has also led to the high rate of default and underperforming loans, which has caused a lot of problems to the two lenders on their balance sheet. So our, pro our solution is, a is to build a comprehensive platform that offers credit assessment that will provide predictive analysis, promote transparency and fairness, and ensure efficiency and accessibility. This platform will come in two modes. There's, the, there's what we call the CRM, and there's the plug and play. The market we're in, we're in the lending market, and we've seen that global lending market is, an, a, a, is valued at as of for 2025, $8.8 .8 trillion, with, with expected growth rate of 26.2%. We aim to take 5% of that, starting off with the developing countries, like countries in, Niger for example, Nigeria, India. Our milestone so far, we have our MVP is basically ready, but it's 80% built out, which has allowed us to begin marketing campaigns, getting us in the door of potential clients and partners, which through that we've been able to discuss with investors, with some investors in our pipeline. How we make money is for our plug and play service, which is tailored more towards tech companies, right? We will charge them pay per API fees. We understand that it's easier to have a suite of, serv a suite of services, which they can plug and access our capabilities. So we charge our API fees. But we also understand that some companies are not tech savvy. So we bundle it all, all together into a platform itself, which they can pay subscription on, which will give them benefits like market data, me membership premiums, and also key insights through our through our system. So the team behind Astora, I'm Abdul Jalal Abakar. I serve as the chief operating officer. We have Mr. Emmanuel Kanji, our CTO and machine learning um, specialist, Pamela Rasana, who is our CEO and Mr. Appa, Emmanuel Appa Jr., who is our head of engineering and lead system architect. Our ask is the sum of $250,000, which will allow us to get 30 customers, which we project to give us a monthly recurring revenue of $4,000, $4,000. We make it, we aim to have an annual recurring revenue of $48,000. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Astora. So, questions from the judges. Um, all right, so, um, Astora, well done. So, um, quick, quick question. Um, 
were you um how did you come about um because this is a lending platform right no so it's not, uh it's not lend we do not dispose the money so we are basically an analytics service we just provide predictive analysis uh analytics to okay. to players for lenders. In the yeah. for lenders people yes, like palm yes. pay op yes. and the like exactly okay so how did you how did you find out that there's a need uh for these guys um and then for you to say okay there's this need for us to for you guys to go about creating um this uh, solution so that you can provide analytics for them to ensure that they disburse very well and analyze, right? All those things yes. you mentioned. Um, yes. How did you see the need? How did you see the need? Okay, so how I saw the need was a friend of mine, right? He told me about the problem. I looked at it first from the consumer side. So I have a friend that um, I believe was Pampe that slandered him very bad. Some things I cannot even say here. But also, I looked at articles from online news publications that there's a high rate of default. Right? A typical example is the Anchor Borrowers Program, which the government dispersed money, but they're having issues in recovering these loans. Not only that, not only that, I believe, was it a few weeks ago, I saw on Punch that we have, we have about two, I think, is it about two trillion naira in unpaid loans? So that means the default is quite high which has impacted the the these lenders so banks Pampi and all that not only that we have discussed with some lenders on we've been able to discuss with some lenders and we've seen that not only is the high default rate a problem but also the operational cost right of you know of operations in the lending space is also high so which is why we we were able to look at it like okay there is a problem Right. How are we going? How we we'll approach this is is not only by providing pro, um, predictive analysis, but also streamline their operational costs, thereby um, um, fortifying their balance sheet. Because that is only way to be able to to mitigate against any overexposure, reduce their overexposure to underperforming loans and other macroeconomic events. By having a for, according to Jamie Diamond, by having a front a fortress balance sheet, you'll be able to withstand any storm. Okay. So because um I'm I'm very, very critical about you know um identifying a problem and and whether that problem is big enough for you to want to begin to deploy resources, time and whatever it is. Um um, to ensure that, so if it's not big enough, it means that you are going to be running at the loss. Um, because if not big enough, you're not big enough to pay your bills and what have you. So, um, I mean, for me, it's very critical. So, um, the ways your engagement, your methods, how you're able to come about this real problem, and mm -hmm. did you engage these guys? If you really engage them, uh, are they willing to, you know, it's you know, um, two things now to say, um, once you hit the ground running, you begin to see the reality. You know, it's good yes. to have a very, you know, fantastic, uh, you know, data that tells you that yeah, this is this, this is a real problem, right? And then mm -hmm. as another thing, if you hit the ground running, will they, these same guys who are telling you, hey, yeah, this is a problem we're having, would are they willing? Will they be willing enough to say, okay, we're going to pay for your services? It's very, mm -hmm. very critical for me. Yeah. So that's why I, I want to see data. That says, yeah, you mentioned, yeah, this it seems to be a problem, right? This is one problem that banks are even having. Banks have this long; it's as long is as old as the the, the uh, you know the banks. Do you understand? These are problems, you know. Um, so the problem exists, but I'm very, very. I want to know. I want to be able to be. I mean, I want to be sure of you know the methods you that you are going to deploy to ensure that you solve the solution. That's for me, that's very, very critical. So that's why I asked you this question so that I can understand um, to know whether I really you have what it takes to um, ensure this, this this startup succeeds. Thank you. Okay, uh, all right, no problem. But I believe I've answered the first part, but the second part, when we did uh, our initial, we've done like, we've done a prototype when we went back, when we went, 
to meet some of these players. They looked at it and said, it's not good enough. So we, we went back to the drawing board and we brought out a new so we brought out a new iteration of our prototype, which we are calling our MVP. Right. But what what um, stopped us the most was when we had a call with an investment banker, right? An investment manager, um, precisely. She said that their company has microfinance, a microfinance arm. Right. But what she said was there's a high cost of operation, right, which is which will affect their balance sheet and also the high interest, which makes them deploying capital quite expensive and the return on investment. So when we had this, we knew that, OK, the next iteration of our product right, has to key into this problem, streamline the operational cost, right, which is why we're just using the MVP we have now. Right is to allow us to go back to this customer, these people we've met before, right? That, okay, this is what we have, right? But we want to hear from you. She also said that most of these tech companies that are in this space, they look at it from the tech side. They don't look at it from the banking side. So which is why we want to go back to these customers again. Let's sit down and discuss how, how do you guys handle your operations from end to end so we know so we note that down and we are still doing our system design such that it keys into, into, their, into their pipeline, making it seamless. Because she also said that there'll be a lot of bureaucracy in trying to implement, right? So we want to make it as easy for them. We want to make it as easy as possible for them. Okay, nice. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Jodo. I don't know whether any of the judges have any question. We can take one more question before we close on this startup. Okay. Hello. So my mine is not a question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just um, uh, an advice to to the team. Mm -hmm. Um, I, though I listen to it, I I can't listen to your response so far. I'm using the investment um the your clients your potential clients um the investment um manager and stuff like that. Uh, what, what my my advice is, I think you need to on is you need to dip more into that the problem, especially um the, the arms of um the your target um customer. You need to dive into their their problem and specifically address because there are a lot of issues when it comes to financial institutions, when it comes to MFI, all this all these um there are, there are a lot there are lots of um, a lot of problems. Them them use that word a lot of problems, and um, it will address able that your your solution, if it's a multi faceted solution, fine and good, is addressing specific problem of this set of set 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 set, set of um, set of people. So uh, my advice is please clarify the problem, just receive it very well. Before you actually, you know, come up with um, a definite solution that could, you know, that could um, address um, your target needs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, before I end this, yes, yes. Thank you for your advice. That's what we we are also aiming as well. So we want to try and meet a potential client every week, right, and discuss with them using our MVP to say, okay, this is what we have now. Let us know what your problem is. Our end goal is to be multifaceted, as you said, to streamline the operational cost in the, let's say, in the banking sector, right? Starting off with lending, but our target market is more of buy now, pay later. But you understand that if we get it right from the banking side, it will be easier to handle the pay later side who are our target customers. So that's why our aim is to have a discuss with a client every single week. You know, you know, from the banking side to the cre credit providers, lenders, so we understand their problem in depth, right? And know how we can tailor this solution to suit to suit their need at first, while discussing with these customers, right, to upgrade our solution to be more. Okay, time up, time up, time up, Abdul Jalal. So, on a final note, please, it's very, very important that you get feedback from quote and unquote paying customers, customers that are likely to pay. So if there is a way for you to gauge 
if these people are going to pay, because it's a different thing for you to ask for a feedback. Um, is my product good? Would you like to use my product versus someone that is going to use it, someone that it solves their pain point, someone that is even ready to pay you an advance on what you are building. Please, I need this. I'm giving you an advance to help me solve it. So that's very important. Paying customer. I think I share the resources with you guys on that. Um, ways you can get um, 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 your business funded by your customers. I share the customer funded business book for you guys. Please go to the media session of, of your group and check that if you still have access to that. So it's very important. Paying customers not just those that will give you feedback. So that's all for Astora. Thank you very much, Astora. So the next stop on the list is Finpadi. Finpadi, are you ready? Finpadi? Okay, Finpadi yeah, is yeah. not ready. Good morning. Okay, Finpadi. I'm ready, ready, I'm here. Okay. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I'm just, let me share my screen. Uh, so while Finpadi is bringing up um, their screen, other startups, please get ready, get your your um, um, your slides up so that you don't waste time. Um, after Finpadi, we we'll have Jagba, then followed by Lega Roots, then the sixth one, Zendit, um, then BitR, then number eight, Trade Hunt, number nine, Meet Drone. Then followed by um, the tenth one, Anaya, eleventh, Powerful, Asoro Automobile. Um, then we have IG Closet, then Sundry Agro, then um, OMZN, then Tralagion AI. Please get your slides ready. So um this is Fimpad, your time starts. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Julius Ichidola, and I'm the founder and CEO of Finpadi. So Finpadi is basically a financial service company that offers financial tools to freelancers and small business owners. And before Finpadi, I was just um a small business owner as well, and I noticed that I whenever I want to probably deliver your services, I find it difficult to assess business loans from these commercial banks I save my money with. And also when trying to manage my businesses, I have to like sign up to multiple apps to probably send an invoice or even basic accounting tools like that. So I now decided to like get a super app that will help with these problems by merging two or several with financial tools together. Yeah, let me just... Finpadi, we can't hear you. Julius. Is he having a network issue? Okay. Um, if Julius is not coming up, we might move to the next person. Julius, if you can hear us, please indicate. Uh, okay, sorry about that. It's my network means off. So as I was saying, the problem here is we have to get several multiple apps to just manage our finances while trying to get our businesses running. So we came up with a solution to like create an app, a platform whereby we can match several financial tools together, tools like invoicing, payment method, and even bill payment as well. So these are the list of services that 
we are coming together to put on the platform the virtual card um real time invoice when you can instead of just getting to write invoice manually and then sending it to your seller or buyer you can easily just come to the platform and write the invoice the name the email and then send it virtually and the person gets it instantly and even pay while still on the platform as well so our market target is the small as small business owners uh, Right now, we are focusing on just Nigeria alone. Then our target market is are just the business owners, while and also freelancers and gig workers because they are the one who actually empower the African market, the African economy. Then the way we make money is through commission, interest rates, and then fees. We sign up whenever um a business issues probably a loan by bill payments or even creates. Um, a virtual card. We we charge a person certain percentage for each of these services they render. Then, uh, let's say currently we are partnering with several organizations. As you can see, we partner with um Blacklist, Sudo, and Save Even as several other of them as well. So, um, this right here is my team. We are four in number. The last person is not here. Um, Julius here, while the other person, Comfort and Jamal, are also very good at what they do. Uh, so yeah, basically that's it. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, question from the judges. Yeah, real quick. So, um. I like the way uh, the fact that you incorporated storytelling. Um, you know, by just telling us your experience, that's the story component that you brought. Uh, kind kind of like fintech. It's one one. Um, I think um, it's beginning to be very saturated. It means that um, you are going to do things very very differently. You are going to be bring a lot of things very very creative, so um people uh, that way, um because already some of the the uh, guys who are already in the space are doing fantastic, um so why would I want to abandon, even though you mentioned which I will get to that point, um so if if some of these things you're saying, uh some of these futures that you're going to bring together, you're trying to aggregate some of these things on, on just one platform. Yes. And I think that for me, currently, one of the issues that I have with some of these guys is there's so much going on, there's so much activity going on on a single app, on a single interface. It, it can be very confusing at the end of the day. So, I mean, I mean, it's very distractive, and you know. And then one of the things, again, for design, um, uh, minimal, minimalist, you know, approach where you have just very uh, powerful features, and and then you 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 don't have to do everything. Do you understand? So look at the basic features um, that everyone or your potential based on your your information gathering. What are the things critical that uh, people will want? Yes. Um, you are just one person. At the end of the day, again, you're not building for yourself. But if you think that it's, it's a problem enough, uh, then how about check it out with other people? Because at the end of the day, you're not just going to be the customer. You are supposed to have so many people who feel the same way you feel. So you need to go out there and find out. It, it's, it doesn't end with you. It doesn't start and end with you. Yes, you're just one person. So if you feel that this is really a problem and it's big enough and that somebody somewhere feels the same way, you need to find out the same, the same people that feel the same way you feel. And then you know whether you can go on with this project or not, or you have to iterate or pivot if you have to. So these are the things that I'm, you should, uh, I'm saying. These are you know, takeaways for you. Uh, yeah, so um, 
It's a huge market, big. And I said, we have a lot of people. It's becoming very yeah. saturated. Yeah. So you have to think of how you're going to do things differently. And um, uh, we are just judges here. I think if you make it to this stage, you're going to have financial guys. Some of the guys are coming in. Uh, the angels are coming. They are very, very astute guys. I mean, they've been in the space. Uh, so you need to do your homework. For you. This applies to everyone. Um, so um, I was critical. I was looking at your team. I wanted to see um, industry founder or founder industry fit. I wanted to see somebody who has a experience in the in the financial sector because you need these people as you know your team. I've been trying to one of the things I've been trying to do. Um, I've not been able to do for everyone. But it's, I realize this is very, very critical, especially when you're operating in the fintech space. You know, this is about money. It's very, very, you play with my money, we're going to have problems. Do you understand? So it's a very yeah. critical space. So you have to have people who understand finance. Do you understand? Yeah. To help drive this. Okay. this solution. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, this is it for me. Thank you. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Theodore. I don't know whether any of the judges have um, any other feedback. One more person. Okay, so Julius, I believe you've um, you've taken note of the feedbacks given. Founder market. Fit yes, I did. Yes, I did. is important apart from product market fit. So go back to the drawing table and work on that in case you make it to the second or the final stage. Thank you very much. So we have the next person, um, Jabba. Hi, good evening, good morning. Good morning, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Your time starts. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Owen, co-founder and CEO of Japa. So what's the situation that we have currently, right? Um, it, it's a million out of 150 million Nigerians are unemployed um, in Nigeria alone, uh, reflecting a staggering um, start on unemployment rate in Africa alone, right? So what's the problem? Why do we have this situation? People lack skills to get the job. Right, they don't have the skills to get the job that they need. Right, um, talent mismatch and access barriers. Right, there's no, um, people don't know where to accurately go and find tailor, um, tailor made roles and applications that fits that level of skills that they need. Right, where does Japa come in? Right, skills market alignment, talent matching, and opportunity equity. Right, Japa basically exists to equip you with all you need to land your dream job, giving you the skills that you that you need to thrive globally. So these are our different user personnels, right? I, I I'm eager to unlock better job opportunities, but my current skills hold me back. Lack of access to job, a company needs someone that has skills, right? And these are the solutions that Japa offers, right? And then um, this is the product that the product that we offer our product, our solution, um, talent vetting assessment services, right? To assess your skills, the level of skills, rather than just going to apply for a job and let you know where you are and help you to get to where you need to be. We offer um live online courses. Our classes are currently going on right now. And then um, we have a, a job market because we give people access to jobs, right? And an AI assistant, right, that helps you to always build your CV to tailor to the job application that you need and track track all your job applications in one place. What's the attraction? We made one thousand dollars in revenue. We've done over fifty revamps, and we have have more than 50, 50 signups for interest for our courses. And we have a community of over one thousand people, right? What's our business model? This is what we charge for our services, right? Our revamps, our courses. Is how we make money basically. And um, how big is the market? So um two to trillion, two to three three um, three trillion dollars, the job market worth by 2030, and over six hundred thousand graduates come out from Nigeria, only in Nigeria alone universities every single year, every single year. And then um, even NYC come members, 
Abuja alone has 38,000 core members. We were there to speak to some of them some days, a few days ago. So these are our product roadmap. These are, these are some of our competitors, direct and indirect competitors. This is what we offer um, in comparison to what they offer and what we offer differently. And um, these are our team. We have more than 10 years experience building solutions that change human life, right? In, in FinTech and EdTech and HR space. So this is our team. And then um, this is the uh, investment acts. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Owen. So um, let's take questions from the judges. So based on your presentation, um, if I understand very well, or if I get you very well, you guys are alive already, right? We are alive, we are alive, we are alive already, yes. We are alive already. When did, so, you, when did you... Sorry? When did you go live? So we started as a company in July. We started July, right? That's making money and revenue, not without a website anyway, a web app in July. But we started as a community since 2020. Just sharing opportunities. We started as a full company this year, July 2020. Okay, so so after building a, a base, you decided I should tell all solutions so that um to meet uh your 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 community's uh needs, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, I like I like that approach. So so far from that time to now, how much have you made in revenue? Though even though I saw is it one thousand USD? Yeah, is that how much you made? I said, how so much? We paid, yes, since July. Since we started July this year as a business now. Yeah, now. from that time to now, currently, this is how much revenue you have made. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm saying, I just want to confirm hey. with you. Hello, if, can anyone this hear me? Is what, I, I can hear you, and I think everyone can hear you. Can you hear me? I think we have lost him or something. Okay, okay, okay. Jackba, Jackba, sorry. We've lost you. So um, maybe when he's back, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? I wasn't hearing you. Yes. Okay, don't worry. He will I stopped come up. that time. So the question is, how much have you made? How much have you generated from July to now? I said $1,000, $1,000. And we plan to, um, our, our personal goal for next year, um, just understanding people and knowing what they need is to make a $100,000 without external funding. Okay, that's ambitious. Okay, that's cool. All right, that's that's it for me. Thank you. Okay, let's take a question from um, Chubu Bikem. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Obviously, I'm still here. Yeah. So, uh, my, my kind of comment is I wanted to first understand when you said you started as a company in July, is it then when you launched the products or when you guys started working on this product? That was when we started offering our services. Yes, that's when we launched our product. In terms of a sheet. So is it okay? So is this platform live now, or because if from what you are saying, maybe you guys started offline, but now moved? Why this, start building the um the online pro, uh, online platform or something? Can you bring more, so I, more yes, like our product? Our product is live, but it just needs a little bit adjustment. Can you see our website? No, so just I just wanted to just get a feedback from you. That's why uh, before I make some comments. So basically, that you know the one thousand revenue, one thousand dollar the revenue you guys paid was just like teaching people, but not really like they had to subscribe and lend on the on the platform, right? No, so no, they they pay for see your list. They, they pay for our courses, our live courses for industry leaders. We teach them live. They also pay. Remember, we exist to help you land your dream job. 
So we help with CV that your whole CV revamps. And we're trying, we want to use AI, Wait, right? Just, just calm down, just calm down. Just take the question one after the other. So don't rush. So the people are courses, our live courses. Currently on fire course analysis. Can you hear me? You're not the one hearing me. You're still talking like calm down. What I'm asking oh. is, what I'm asking is the paying customers. Yes. Uh, you run an ad, let me say you run an ad through the community, they subscribe and pay you guys, and then you guys maybe use Zoom and all that to train them, and not that they came yeah. to the platform and they got training, like, it's not like it's a direct conversion from the platform you guys have built. Um, no. They came to us. Okay, so, so. I think, I don't get the question, that's the truth, I didn't get exactly what you're trying to say, what you're trying to say. Okay, when you say your website, what do you guys tend to do with your website? Okay, you so say website. it's still the, so the flow that we have through our through like a sheet where you go and you sign up a form. It's still the same flow whereby you go to our website, you click on our courses, and you you fill a form for our live course. Still the same flow. Okay, so it's not an e-learning thing. It's more like you register for the course and then you people will take into a Zoom where there will be a course, live classes, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, but we plan to build a learning management system if we have enough resources to do that. Okay, so at the moment, that's that's basically what I'm trying to understand. Yes, 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 you're correct. That's what, that's what so at the moment, you have this, you have a service, but there's no like on uh, a platform now, just like when you mentioned like uh, maybe entry level and all. Yes. Or this is where you can go and learn, and then where also yes. the such platform does not exist yet. Yes, 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 it does exist. Okay, so, okay, so, uh, so how, so the one thousand dollars you guys have made, so all the, with at hundred dollars, so it's more like ten persons you guys have trained, and did all these people come from your community you have built or from external? Okay, so as I said, we have different revenue streams, right? So it came from external, like word of mouth referrals from people, and even from some sponsored ads. Okay, so that's that doesn't give me the kind of context I was asking on the aspect of you know the yes, conversion. So I mean, how many from our community you guys now Sorry? that you guys are training on? Sorry? How many courses do you guys have available you are training on? No, right now it's just data analysis that we're training on. Well, next day we're okay. going to have four five. No, just no, no, just calm down, just calm down. I just uh, just respond to the question. I'm not asking, just okay. stick to the okay. question I'm asking. So it's just that analysis, right? Yes, data analysis. Right. Yes. So and then how many people? How many people? Uh, so each. So from the data analysis, you said hundred dollar. I saw in your presentation hundred dollar. So it means that you create ten pieces, you guys, and train up data analysis. Or is there a wrong assumption? We train more than ten people on data analysis. Okay, so more than ten people. So uh, so how mm -hmm. much do you charge for a course then? We charge hundred dollars, right? But you have to offer discounts to help people to be able to accommodate them. Do you get? So okay. we charge. You can charge fifty dollars for like an early bed payment. That's what we do. Do you get? Oh, okay, okay. So okay, so the next question I wanted to ask is: You guys, you said you have spent twenty uh twenty twenty t uh t t before you guys launched in July, uh building yeah. communities. Yes. And um, which should have resulted to a significant, significant career growth. Sorry, significant, significant revenue of managing or ripping off from the community, um, taking advantage or maybe offering value to the communities. But you're talking about running ads and all that, you know, ads and all that to be like. So what what has been the impact of the community you have built as respect to the uh, a organic organic growth as uh, to your business? So how many people from your community, you know, as percentage to the number of persons that have been able to call through your course, like data analysis course. Okay. Um, so I don't have the so for my, for our community, right? Um that have enrolled from our course, very few percentage of people from that community have taken that course, right? The paid for can afford to pay for that course okay. because of the cost of the course. Right. So, I mean, as, as they're talking to me, we've admitted some people for free because the testimony of Japa is a testimony of change lives. It's not, it's not just about the money, but the impact. Right. 
So I was trying to point out something to you that I don't think that you've quite gotten, that courses are not the only form of revenue for Japa. Do you get? I'm with you, guide. Exactly. Now, as I said, Japa exists to connect people to jobs, right? People don't have jobs because they lack skills, so hence you do courses, right? People don't have jobs because their CVs are horrible. So many of our members of from our community, and um, close to 100 of them now, have paid for CV revamps through us, right? We've done, they pay for those CV services. They cannot afford costs. So we noticed that we are building a solution end-to-end -end that can accommodate if after this call for you to talk to me, I could give you a document that has our different user personals and clearly broken down, right? The different categories of customer segments. So some of those people, they don't have money to afford all these your courses, right? So they those they, this the whole CV and everything stuff meets their own needs at that point for the um, discounted amount that it is offered. That's okay. That's so, an, let, let, so let me look at your so. So let me let me let me just summarize here and look at some of the parts of your in, in your customer journey because no matter how beautiful the CV is, if the person does not have a skill, it, it becomes a very significant issue. So I mm -hmm. I could I, I could I might not be able to I don't if I have I don't have a skill and I cannot pay for a skill so that's not how fantastic my CV will look. I will pay for a CV that will make me probably maybe that will fit me my personality. I probably will enter the job. I mean, interviews uh, and probably not make it up, you know, that's, that's big. So the first aspect, so, and p for people who, who could pay for, so I think you really want to really also, why you talk about individual users, listeners, you will really want to understand at what journey could you be converting at what point in time? Because if you have over, over how many people, you say over hundred people who are probably going through your CV point, uh, services and those people, uh, do they have skills first so if they have skills fantastic right but if you don't have skills and you're building up that's also like you know that dream that's what you're going to sell as a testimony it's it's, it's it becomes so much you know it becomes so much like you know, about the long run and secondly also you also need to be very mindful as much as possible you know you know conscious business people are looking for impact or you're also looking at amount of money and how, what's what's your biggest cash cow and uh, how do you also use that to focus on people while you're building your community? So if your biggest cash cow, you know, which I think is probably the courses, because connecting to the jobs, are, are you serving as a recruitment agency where companies pay you? Because mm -hmm. where is your biggest cash cow coming? And if it's the courses or recruitment, you probably will want to focus on building about 70% of your communities around the biggest cash cow, where you also want to make sure that, you know, they can also leverage other, 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 you know, values and this thing, but you need to really focus on at if, if everything we both have to tell ourselves in a very calm, skeletal, you know, a truth, what and what can we can we consistently do alone that can see sustain our business? And that's one of the key things if you want to build an organic community that will really you I advise you to really kind of really focus on so that in as much as possible you will make an impact, you get a result, you will also run a business that is sustainable. That's my feedback. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you very, very much, Ruby Kim. So, um, Owen, I think you've gotten more than enough feedback and um, you've overshoot your time already. So, um, go make use of the feedback. Um, so, we move to the next person or the next startup. Legal Roots. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, so your time starts. Okay. I'm trying to share. Okay, I'm trying to share my screen. All right. Good day, everyone. My name is Ruth Kripre, and I'm the founder of Legal Solutions. Before I proceed, I would like to share a very short story. So growing up, my dad went into a mutual but unwritten contract um, with a military officer. My dad was able to do his own part of the deal, but the officer did not pay him. And when my dad went to meet him, 
he instead of paying him, indicted him and put him behind bars for one month. My family suffered. That money was in seven figures and it would have changed the quality of lives that we lived, but it never came and um, we suffered. My mom was heavily pregnant. And so I decided to become a lawyer. So when I began to practice, um, I was not um, getting well paid like I ought to. I was receiving salaries like 15,000 per month, 20,000 Naira per month, which was barely enough to do practically anything. Remember, I wanted to become a lawyer because I wanted to avoid um, others from facing the pain that my family faced. So eventually, during the COVID-19 break in 2020, I shared my dad's story on my Facebook page. And I discovered that many business owners could relate with the same thing. They had experienced it personally or someone close to them. And that was how Legal Resolutions was prepared. Legal Resolution is a number one go-to platform that provides affordable legal services, you know, to SMEs and tech startups from the comfort of their homes within minutes and in few clicks. We started in 2020, um, we registered in 2021, and so far we've done a lot. So what's the problem? Research has it that 50% of SMEs and 90% of startups don't get to see their fifth anniversary. And why is this? Because of legal knowledge gap, high legal fees, lack of legal documentation, legal compliance issues, wrong structure, no structure, there's a trademark claim, a copyright claim, and all of those fines, these are part of the issues that SMEs face and they end up shutting down before their fifth anniversary and even startups. Meanwhile, research has it that there are 39.4 million MSMEs in Nigeria and they contribute 48% to the national GDP and it's 4% to the employment. So I thought to myself, if they contribute this much, then they should be able to last longer so that their impact can be felt you know, more. So what's our solution? We have created an automated, easy to use legal solution and services to these SMEs to access from the comfort of their homes in few clicks, in minutes, and at affordable rates. From business registrations to filings, to customized legal templates, collection letters, legal advisory and consultation, and what have you. Our unique selling point is our streamlined and affordable legal solutions to SMEs. Um, we have competitors like Sabi Law, Resolution Law, Basi Legal, DIY Law. Even if they offer legal services, they do not offer the range of legal services Hi, that Mom. we Please offer. And okay, wow, oh. we um. Our business model is a B2B and a B2C, and this is our figures since we started. We are a profitable business. We are looking to scale and acquire 600 more subscribers in the coming year so that we can um, double and 10x our income as it currently is. Thank you so much for your time. I'll just take questions. Okay, question from the judges. Okay, who became the yeah. Okay, thank you. So I you, there there was last statement you made, uh say a profitable business. So um I, I didn't get that right. Is it based on revenue or based on profitability? Both of them were a profitable business, both revenue and profitability. Okay, so if you're a profitable business, uh, so mm -hmm. do you need? Uh, okay, so what do you need? So you don't need fund to, you don't need to raise money, right? We need to raise money. Like I said, we want to acquire six hundred new subscribers. So from before now, what we have been doing is, um, all our solutions, uh, we have created them, but they are not all running as an autom on automation yet. 
because um, what we are offering, we want so, to... So, so, okay, it's fine. It's fine. But what I wanted to know is, if you say you're a profitable business, already you're mm -hmm. pulling profit. So it means that the rate of your profit and the money you're asking, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's quite wide. So what have you been able to do over the time with your profits? And how long have you been profitable? Okay, so we we have team. We have a team that is on salary, and then we have we have a website. No, so no, 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 no. We, that's not what I'm asking. You say you're a profitable business, so I say, yeah. how long have you been profitable? We've been profitable so we, since last year. We've been profitable since last year, like substantially. Yes, and. With our profits, we were able to acquire like um team more team members because before then we were not even on salary. Like I used to just be the only one running it before we brought. So, but that, that's not that's not profitable. So, if you are not going on salary, then you're not even capturing your costs. So, you're talking about profitability when you're not because capturing are, your cost. That that's what I'm trying to explain to you. So, like. We are a virtual, um, we don't have a physical space. So most of our cost goes to salaries and then the platform we are trying to build. That's where your cost um, goes to for now. And uh, so, so again, is okay. again is uh, my feedback I will give you part first before I go to other things is to be very careful on how you use that word profitability because it can be very, very misleading. And it might also oh. be in a very tight corner because from there I'm not yet convinced that the profitability about what you're saying. I probably need to see your numbers and really to look at it to so see like what's profitability and what are you are you actually capturing the cost, the cost, the real cost, oh. because sometimes we're not even capturing the real cost for, for, of business. And we're not putting cost in okay. some of the things that will now run around and say profitability. It might also be something that will backfire. You know, you want to look good, you probably in front of yeah. investors, but I tell you that the majority of that might backfire instead of making you look good. That's one. Okay. Secondly, in the aspect of um, you mentioned all the presentation, you mentioned about SMEs in uh, to the next 10 years or five years or Okay, so we have SMEs and startups. Okay, so okay, so that and that that, 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 that becomes interesting because if you're doing startup, then them that tell us to definitely just a click or two clicks and to give you yes, beyond sir. that when it comes to startups. Yes. Right? Sir. So, yes. So, so we'll text and SMEs. But in mind, uh, getting then those customize something you will change, uh, just you know, template that you just may change here, change here, wouldn't offer, yes. wouldn't work. Uh, um, time right. lets me to actually explain. So how do you how do you intend to scale into that? Okay, so actually, like I said, that's what we want to be known for. But that is like the doorway to um bringing droves of businesses because even when they come we have like one of services apart from the um the subscription based model that we have we have one of services where the, the idea is that businesses should be able to feel safe when they have a legal issue they have somewhere that they can run to and at affordable prices right so we have one of services then we have the subscription based model and the idea is to make it affordable we have droves of them before we now go premium, like where we have um, for like the tech um, startups that we are talking about, they may come for something, maybe like one one on one consultation. They're not even aware of every other thing that we do. But when they come, because we have lawyers on our team, then we can now save them those still load solutions. But the idea is to be bringing droves of them, which will eventually now upsell to, to become our premium clients. So, okay, so thank you. But just to round up on this, if you build your brand around SMEs, as a startup, I'm not going to come to you because I know you're not going to deliver value for me. So you also need to be very careful about building yourself to be a that goal for SMEs because the need okay. for SMEs are totally different from startups, like, you know, scalable startups. Yes, sir. Right? So if you build your brand around it, you're technically saying that 
if I think about you, I think about SMEs, I shouldn't, I wouldn't even come in the first place, even when you have a solution for me. If, mm. if your brand pro only portrays SMEs. So you also need to be very careful on how we play the game. That's my feedback. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Ubikim. Any other feedback? One more, um, Judge, before we close um, for this startup. Um, Ruth, hope you got the feedback very well. Yes, I did, sir. Okay. Um, so we move to the next startup. Um, Zendit. Zendit, are you ready? Zendit, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Can I share my screen, please? Yes, please. Your time starts. Okay. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is uh, Bjorn Falomo. I'm the founder of Zendit Technology Limited. Um, 39 million, and that is the number of MSMEs you have in Nigeria today, 39 million. If I should ask that, what do you do if you had a parcel to be sent to Ocean State or Abuja within the next 24 hours? You will probably have to ask around, or even when you find uh, a referral, you, they won't be able to deliver as soon as you want. Uh, this speaks to the fact that uh, logistics service in Nigeria is highly fragmented, uh, expensive, and unaccessible when needed. As a business owner, you usually require multiple business partners to service your diverse and uh, multiple needs at every point in time. And it's a fact that logistics costs amount to about 40% of the product cost and delivery delays poses a major threat to order fulfillment. That is why we at Zengit have provided a platform that gives you access to delivery at your fingertips to 60% in logistic cost. It is scalable to any state and nation as it is uh, totally user driven and it's a peer to peer platform that allows for user autonomy and it's highly profitable as we take our 20% commission on all transactions. That's how we make money. In creating this solution, we, we've been able to make significant things you have in Nigeria who are now able to conveniently serve the due to logistic cost, because a lot of businesses, they lose customers when they have to call up their uh, delivery uh, cost. And we're also imparting the over 40 million young Nigerians who can now become smart earners by delivering package on behalf of others. We've also been able to remove to participate in logistic services, because if you think about it today, when you think about logistics, you think about the men on the bike or the men driving the van. But today, as we onboard uh, uh, existing commuters, Last mile logistic businesses, anyone, both men and women, can begin to partake in logistic services. We're also able to impact through resource sharing in the, in the bid to fight uh, climate change. Because we onboard existing last mile logistics, as I said earlier, car owners and even commuters to share their resource and end on every journey that they make by uh, delivering package on behalf of others. What's more is that uh, we identify that among our users, there are indigenous students who are on campus who are trying to make a living to support themselves. So we provided access to student loan for the indigenous users in partnership with their schools, of course. And we also identify the female ones among them by providing them with school fee subsidy because we believe they are more vulnerable among all the indigenous students that we see. We've also been able to provide uh, access to career jobs on demand for every users thereby driving a circular economy. I would like to share a short story about myself. Uh, at the age of eight, uh, through life, I've had, to, I've had to struggle. And even when I was on campus, uh, I had to do odd jobs. But if I had a platform like Zendit that would have provided me with jobs on demand or even provided me with access to school student loans during the time when uh, uncles and aunties failed to divide their promise or when they did it, Zendit would have been a very tremendous help to me at the time. We are targeting uh, the uh, it's 4 million Nigerians on the internet uh, that are mobile today, and we are targeting just 60% of them. And since we went live last month, uh, last two months, we've had over, I mean, 2,500 signups and secured uh, significant partnerships with private and government institutions. We also provide software as a service for e-commerce platform to give their users access to seamless logistics services. We've been able to 
secure partnership with uh, third party logistics, I mean, user verification services for our couriers, and also with insurance company, we've been to transfer uh, uh, risk to the insurance company. Our competitive advantage, so we are in competition with the likes of Travela, Errand, Uber, and Sense that uh, we provide the 24 hours uh, timeline for delivery and uh, user autonomy for, for price for our prices. System. So the users get to determine their own pricing. The team is consisted of myself, who uh, has six years experience in logistics uh, management. Peter, who has uh, six years experience as a full stack developer, and Lola, who is our CEO, has over six years experience in product design and sales. We currently also have over seventeen volunteer Bravo. staff who are engineering, accounting, and marketing, and we have over two hundred volunteers across campuses in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Join us as we set to empower uh, the Nigerian business and uh, young adults and youth. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Zandi. So, um, questions from the judges, please. Questions from the judges, please. So, Zandi, please, while we are waiting for more questions, can you please throw more light on your traction again? There's a place you mentioned 2,500 sign-ups and all. Can you please um, throw more light on that? And then the okay, collaboration. Yes. So, so since we went, so we've been able to transfer. So, yeah. Please, let's see that, that your slide okay, on yes, your so... sign-ups and what. You said collaborations. You mentioned something about your traction. 2,500 sign-ups or something like that. Yes. So since we went live, we've been, or since it's, it's a peer-to-peer -peer, user-driven platform, uh, we've been onboarding users on our platform and so far we've hit 2,570, I'm sorry, 2,520 sign-ups to date. And we are targeting 50,000 users by the end of 2024. So we'll be able to carry out 180,000 deliveries and uh, generate 95,400 in in uh in revenue okay what did you when did you go live two months ago two months ago yes so in a space of two months you acquired 2500 users right yes sir. are they paid users and what revenue have you generated from those users Okay, so before we before we migrated into the our, our, our app, we we were during during the movement during the time of our proof of concept, we've been able to process over one million in deliveries, and uh, so when we develop our app, we've been able to try to migrate them onto the app, and so we've been onboarding users on that app for a wider scale uh, uh, um, process. Okay, you've done one million in delivery within the past two months that you launched. So, so no, the, this one million in deliveries was is a is a accumulation of before we went live. So, we've been we've been trying our proof of concept uh, by uh, onboarding people in the WhatsApp group. People who request oh, I have a package to deliver to this because I've been in logistics for a while now for uh, about six years. And uh, so I had to set out on my own and wanted to try what I felt was the solution to the problem we're always facing with uh, same day delivery. And so uh, when we started, it was uh, it's proved it proved to be uh, to be a need that people wanted. And so during that period of time, we were able to uh, to do about a million in transaction. And uh, so we when we launched, we had a website, and then we had to launch our web app. That's the beta launch of our web app, and started migrating people two months ago. So that's what I mean by two months ago, we moved to the web app two months ago. Who are your strongest competitors in the market? Well, our strongest right now is Uber, but then Uber does not basically serve a nationwide demand. They are mostly do dominated in Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt. So people who want to sign the package from Oyo to Abeokuta are unable to, uh, to maximize that platform. And that is where uh, speed up. I mean, that's where, um, that where Zendit comes in. We also have Speedaf, who is also unable to achieve that. We also have errands who are unable to achieve that. And what's more interesting is the fact that 
all our competitors control the pricing of their products and services, but we leave it to the user. So for someone who wants to request a pickup from Lagos to Ibadan, he sets his budget, says, okay, my budget is 2,500 and the courier also bids for the job and they argue over the price and decide what price to go for. So out of that negotiation, whatever they agree to, we just take a 20% commission for our own profit. I mean, for our own revenue. So can you also throw, um, first off, um, are you sure these are the only competitors you have in Nigeria? Okay, so there's truck, or the truck deals with large ullage, uh, as the name implies. There's Sendstack. Sendstack only uh, onboards uh, uh, car owners. We go beyond that. That Uber also onboards only car owners. Quick, Quick runs the same model of service, but Quick does not cover the entirety of Nigeria as well. And they also own their own bikes. But we are a third party. We are a marketplace that uh, that connects the demand and supply together. We also have Traveller. We have Speedup. We have uh, the bigger players who are the traditional logistics, the fragmented ones, as the GIG, as the DHL, who are very very expensive for the small businesses who require logistics services. Okay, because I'm looking out for a particular um, competitor that does um, similar thing. I've forgotten the name, but there's a competitor Crocs. that does similar Crocs. thing that you're doing. Yes, Crocs. Yeah, I, can't see them. I think they are they are one of the companies um, um, funded by Professor Lewis. I can't remember the company's name right now. So can you... Yes, but of players in the imagine uh, third party logistics, uh, di digital logistics space today. There are, there are quite a lot of players who are, you know, doing incredible things. Uh, okay. Uh, there's I... Traveller, I mean, there's Crocs, there's a Crocs app, there's a, the Sense Start, there's the Errand. Okay, okay, okay. So I think, um, I think Chubu yes, Bikim has, has um, some feedbacks to give you. Oh, I really appreciate that. Thank you. So I think my first will start with the question. I wanted to know when you mentioned users and you're saying sign up. So I'm trying to really understand what you mean by sign up because sign up does not really translate to user. Right. So I wanted to because you when he says 22,500 sign ups and then you are talking about uh, users. I think if you have 2,500 users, then definitely you should be hitting nothing less than almost on a monthly basis, or not less than 5 million every month. For you to say 1 million since from manual to now, and you have 2,500 sign-ups, then that's the problem. That's not user. That's not how to use it. So we'll probably we have maybe less than 10% of the 2,500 being actually carrying out activity on the platform. So do you have data of... How many deliveries? I think that's supposed to be all you're supposed to be using instead of vanity metrics because the sign up is more like a vanity metrics. So, uh, do you have number of deliveries, uh, or and how many number of these sign ups have actually made a delivery at least once? I think that's more like a realistic data. Yes, yeah, it could be it could be a, a maybe an enticing thing to say two hundred two thousand five hundred uh, you know sign ups, but that doesn't translate to users. So you probably want to communicate rightly, but it's good, it's, it's a good aesthetics, so to say, but it can also mean that we are trying to hide things. Okay, I'll, I'll definitely work on that, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ubikem. Any other feedback for this startup before we move to the next one? Okay, none. So, um, thank you, Zendit. So, we are moving to BitR. Bitar, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Do you have your no, slide ready? Okay, please, can we see my screen? Uh, I'm trying to put that up now. Please, can we see? Uh, it's not, it's not yet know. up. Okay, let, let, me, let me just go ahead. Let me go ahead for the sake of time. Okay, okay. good afternoon, use... everyone. My name. Okay, thank you, Pascal. Okay, great. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ayomide Samson. Umahole. I am the founder and lead for Beat Out Technologies. Beat Out Technologies is a tracking solution 
and what we what we do as digital technology is, is the premium digital enable uh, product and service provider that offer end to end security risks across physical spaces for individuals, for enterprises, as well as for government. We have two uh, we have two uh, product we we we. We offer namely we have a product which is the big outcrag which is a tracker device that is similar to the apple airtag as well as we have our service which is the bit r tracker app that works side by side with this bit r tracker device so when we talk about the tracker device the tracker device is a button size device that is similar to the apple airtag i don't know if we've come across that before so this helps you to track items and valuables such as keys wallet bags even office accessories like Laptop, like if we look, for instance, uh, very less attention has been paid to the issue of physical security. We just see people talking about cyber and all of that. And we've, we've really got to be very, uh, very, very less attention to the physical security aspect. And if we look at the problem, we see that. Sorry, can I hear you? I'll be a link out. We can hear you. Please, can you guys hear him? I think the network is really. Hello, please. Can, can we all hear me now? Sorry, my network just put me out. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hello, can we hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK, thank you. So just like I was saying, quickly to round up, like I said, we have a product, which is the beta tracker device that can be used to track items and valuables. And I mentioned it works on three antenna, Bluetooth low energy. We have our own ultra wide band as well as it works on NFC. So this is how our apps work. It actually track items and it can send, it can send notification through the app in such a way that you can track this, uh, you can track the specific location of this item. We are hoping to integrate uh, IoT, which will give us limitless you will give us limitless tracking solution. This particular device is at the MVP stage presently. Then when we go straight to our service, which is our software app, our software app, which works side by side, apart from working side by side with the tracker device, one good thing with our software app is it, we have put it in such a way that it can be able to do supply chain tracking, which is one of the unique selling points of this app. It doesn't just work side by side with tracker device. It's able to do supply chain tracking, which would mitigate the issue of counterfeit as well as mitigate the issue of, of not getting originality of product. So one way this app work is that it works with brand owners, manufacturers, which is a B2B format, brand owners, manufacturers. For instance, if you own a business, for instance, we all knew that uh, when Adidas started, they weren't actually the producers. They didn't produce the, sh the, the shoes or the clothes from their end. They contracted another firm to produce why they had their brand name, work with it. So this is this is what this app helps us do. For instance, Adidas had to sign a contract with the with the, uh, the, the, the shoemaker or the clothes maker, why they are just the brand. So this app can bring together shoemakers as well as clothes makers I'm just giving an analysis. 
anybody that has to do with the commercial space. So you can bring the brand owners and the manufacturers together. So in such a way that transaction can happen in between them, in such a way that we can now track, for instance, if Adidas request for 50, and then counterfeit solution you can now say if adidas request for 50 and we see 55 in the market that means five are counterfeit and one unique unique point with the app is it works with an escrow account because payment system can go through it so that's reduced payment dispute for instance so if adidas contract let's say nike to produce for them when adidas make this payment Nike doesn't get the payment until certain terms and conditions are fulfilled. So the account is held in the, the money is held in the escrow until when in the escrow account, until when these terms and conditions are met, then as at then the money can then be delivered to either the uh delivered to the manufacturer from the brand owners. Hence, there is no issue of payment dispute, and we can now reduce the rate of counterfeit solution. This is one special thing that our software app device does. Apart from, apart from working side by side with our tracker device, it tracks the supply chain as well as solve the issue of counterfeit product. Thank you. OK. Thank you very, very much, Sansin. I don't know, any feedback or questions from the judges? So Sansin, please, can you quickly give us, throw more light on one, your traction so far, then two, what makes you think that there is really a need for this? Have you been able to test the market? Any feedback from your test and all? Please, can you answer that? Okay, okay. Uh, as regards our traction, like I said, the tracker device is at MVP stage and we've not made any revenue as regards the tracker device. We only have a discussion recently with uh, the Nigeria Army headquarters who asked us that we will be, that we'll be test running the MVP whenever it's ready with them. So there's no traction as regards the tracker devices at MVP stage presently. But when it comes to the uh, app software, it's already launched presently. And we have had um, uh, local, uh, local, local brand owners and local brand manufacturers sign up with us. Presently, we've been able to make up to $500, around $430, around $430 to $500 so far as regards the software, because we had uh, like we like we had a uh, herbal herbal uh, medicine maker sign up to us we had one of these hospitals who was actually who actually wants to make uh had their own kind of uh drug in the market so they had a sign up with about 500 dollars so far 450 to 500 dollars so far and we have presently two of active users as regards the app. The app just launched about three months ago. we have been on it for a while, but we we're able to launch about three months ago. That's actively running. That's only where we've made revenue so far. But as regards the tracker device, we're at MVP. And by the close of the year, hopefully by the start of January, we hope to get it to the market. But until then, it's still at MVP stage. OK. OK. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Um, any other question from the judges? OK, so let's move next to the um, the next person on the list is um, Trade Hunt. Trade Hunt, are you ready? Yes. Okay, please come on. Yes, yes, I'm ready, sir. I'm ready. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right. I'm sharing my screen. Um, okay. All right. If my screen is visible, may you please just alert me, sir? Yeah, we can see. And your time starts. All right. All right. 
The current problem that we are facing in South Africa is that there are more than 2,000 fintech startups and applications that exist and also operate, of which more than 70% of the citizens of Africa alone aren't using any of these um, applications and solutions. Secondly, there's a difficulty of accessing these tools for fintech users uh, to search and use applications out of Africa, further in reaching Western and Eastern nations. Thirdly, is that there is if fintech developers are unable to get their solutions to Africans who truly need them, and therefore they end up shutting down, like a few case scenarios that we've seen in Africa. But most importantly, what I've realized, store and capture all the information that is generated by both fintech developers and users. The solution that I came up with is a data capturing smart application called Trade Hunt. How we will offer the solution to capture these users is we offer users access to apps and fintech solutions on one platform. We offer them access to fundamental and technology news that they will need offer access to technology and tools that the developers themselves will be able to use to enhance the uh, solutions on the app itself. We have a post and thread sections for users and developers to communicate. This further increases retention and usability of the app and keeps people using it on a daily basis. The market size is there are currently more than 300 million FinTech users and more than 50 million of them we can target in the next 10 years. We believe we can capture 30% of the entire African fintech user market, which is worth roughly about $200 billion. That should guarantee us a growth revenue of $5 billion over the next 20 years. Our business model is our revenue is generated through data sales and targeted advertising. Through user data sales, what we do is we sell the generated data to third-party users who are in the fintech space and the developers in Africa so that they can be able to build better products. How we calculate it is for, for an average revenue per user of 10,000 people, company would pay $2, which would quantify 20,000 every month, uh, depending on the length of the contract we have with them. Uh, for targeted advertising, we allow for targeted advertising on the basis of, uh, it could be traders, you're looking for speculators, financial institutions, insurance, venture capitalist, age, gender. And then from there, we are able to deduce a cost of advertising, which would be daily cost times the number of users equivalent. And the minimum would be a $1 per day for advertising, which if somebody was to take um, $1 times one day, it would quantify about 500 to 1,200 users they can get access to. Now, the maximum is unlimited. It depends on the person's budget. Uh, another important factor is our attraction. Currently, we have 200 users loads and the sharing of APKs. Uh, there's a 50.5% retention. So we are seeing quite a good number of users staying on the app. And this is due to the fact that we offer the news and a thread section. And all of this is through organic growth. We haven't had any other form of revenue paid advertising. The team consists of myself and four other individuals, which are my CEO, or COO, the CTO, and everybody else is the database developers. These are the people that further enhance how we store the data. And our partners who help us in uh, South Africa include the NYDA, which has granted us 5,000, SIDA, IBASA, which is our board advisor. And in, a, in, in terms of competition, we are currently competing in the app of the year, MTN, SME Toolkit, and the FOIA Awards, which we are being nominated for 2024. Our past the Gen Zs that will be using these fintech solutions is currently Rosebank College, which has roughly about 50 different uh, centers in South Africa. And they've allowed us to come every Friday and offer financial literacy to their students. So we plan on increasing it over to 20 or 30 different schools over the course of five years, whereby we can oh, infiltrate and give financial literacy. And, and financial literacy from the very beginning while they are still young. Uh, that is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Tredon. Please, any questions or feedback from the judges? So while we're waiting for questions, please, in one sentence, please, 
What, yes, sir. What problem does your business solve? We are solving, let me show it to you, sir. The problem we are solving is that there is no one central source of data. All the fintech data in Africa is apps being developed and there's nobody storing this information. One central um, source of data for what exactly? Source of data as in the age, the demographics, um, the usability of the apps, what they like about the app, which parts are more important for them than not. So fintech app developers and uh, institutions and solutions providers are developing from the basis of their own research. But what we are saying is we want to become a multifunctional app whereby they can showcase all their products here. And through the usability of their apps on our platform, we can store that data and give it back to them so they can understand if what they are building is positive for the market. Okay, please, this, this particular slide you are showing is too wordy. Nobody can see it. So next time you, yes. can, you can make this put this into data. Okay. It's much better than writing a lot of words that people cannot see. Then secondly, please okay. simplify um, the problem and the solution you are creating. Like the words are too much. The grammar is too much. Make it simple okay. so that even a seven year old kid to a nine year old kid can understand it. The wordings are too much. Please go back to your slide or go back to your team. Simplify what problem you are solving and who you are solving it for. So finally, can you give us a feedback on your traction and when you launched? You mentioned, I think you mentioned somewhere that you had to, is it 200 downloads or something? When did you yes, launch sir. and how long did did it take to get those downloads? And those downloads, are they active users? Please give us more information on that. All right, we launched in July 10th, but uh, in those days, I focused more on affecting the application. Live on Google Play Console at the begin at the end of July, of which between July and to date, we acquired 200 users. From Google alone, we have uh, more than 60, more than 89 users, I mean. And then the remainder is from APK sharing from the schools that we visit and from FinTech solution companies that we visit also. Okay, how many among these people are active users? And are they paying for the platform? That's what I mean by active users. Okay, so the platform to use is completely free. Uh, the generation of revenue comes through the form of selling the data would have generated to third party companies, which are fintech company based. Okay, so for now you've not started generating any revenue yet. No, no, we haven't. So we just wanted to focus a bit more on user growth, at least to get to 10,000 downloads, then we would be able to quantify that data at a better price. Okay, so what plans do you have to get to that download? as quickly as possible. So currently 100,000 US dollars, with it, we will be able to now gen, uh, implement paid marketing. And through that, then we can focus on getting the users that we want from all over Africa and the world beyond. Do you have a community? Uh, on the app itself or on all our platforms, social media included? Whether social media or anywhere, do you have any community, whether here or, or Metaverse, where do you have your community? The community itself, we're trying to build it and keep it on the app through the posts and uh, thread sections. So, so we have an additional community on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. That's where we are also trying to grow a community to be able to bring them towards the app itself. Okay, so one feedback I'll give you is that you should find a way to build a community of, of, of raving fans around one, what you are building. I think one of the presenters today 
already had some paying users from their community even before they built their actual app. You can look at the, the apps that you have around Africa. So many of them have communities on Telegram, anywhere from Rise, um, Facebook, all of them. They have communities somewhere that even without their apps, people complain, drop um, feedbacks and all of that on their community. So you can start building a community that even before you fully launch or whatever, you have thousands of people who are waiting. So I think you have to take um, your community building um, very seriously. So I think that's all for now. Any other feedback from the judges before we move to the next person? MIT drone, are you ready? Okay, so thank you, um, Trade Hunt. Let's move to the next person. MIT drone, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's have you. Let's make it quick. Your time okay. starts. So I'm trying to share. You are not ready yet. Yes, I'm trying to share the. Um, the next person on the list. Night. Anaya, Anaya, are you ready? Anaya, yes, ready. are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Please start. All right, let me share my slide. I don't know, can you see my slide? My yes, screen? please. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ochiname Unugos. Steven David, one of the co-founders of Anaya. And I'm excited to introduce to you Anaya Technologies. Um, picture this. Every day, millions of people in Nigeria, Africa at large, um, have issues with transportation, logistics, and e-commerce um, due to the this disconnected <laughs> um, user experience and disconnected technology system. Um, limited visibility in um, tracking data and um, poor poor um, transparency in pricing. Um, we've been able to solve this issue by. Um, and I have been able to solve this issue by creating an integrated ecosystem where e-hailing, logistics, and e-commerce have been born to become one in a single app. So uh, to be able to streamline operation, optimize resources, and reduce cost, and um, exceptional experience by elevating the experience of both the stakeholder of the, the stakeholders, that is the passengers, the drivers, and the shoppers. Um, what Anaya has been able to do is um, um, try and create um, a platform where a user wouldn't have the issue of um, transportation or logistics or having to shop by changing different apps or going from one app to the next. So we, for instance, let me give you a story of um, if you're trying to shop online, and you're trying to pick a product or you, you, you order for a product. And most of the times those products are in the country, but due to the issue of um, of uh, delay, um, delay in um, logistics, those items doesn't get to you. It takes about four to five days before it gets to you. And those items are in the country and not just in the country, in the same state with you. So Anaya has been able to create um, this um this uh, platform this integrated platform where the 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 vendors can actually have a virtual store where they can manage their products and have access to logistics partners from different companies where they can actually get their product to their users seamlessly without having the issue of delayed time and this 
um, process can be tracked by the user easily, real time, to ease the user's um, experience and elevate his experience, and also help the user to schedule their daily time, not waiting for a delivery man to come, not knowing when he will come, but actually you can actually time the process effectively. Um, our services include ride booking, delivery, and um, vendors slash stores. So our vendor sections include um, both food, groceries, and pharmaceuticals. And we could have much more in the future. So um, our traction so far has been, um, we've been able to launch our MVP um, last year. And um, we've been able to acquire about um, 7,100 plus um, um, sign up on our different plat um, section of our apps. Um, our critical partners, um, that's our ride uh, drivers partners, includes about um, 3,100 plus drivers that have partnered with us. And um, our, sorry, sorry, um, 2,500 drivers that have partnered with us and 3,100 um, potential users and users that have partnered with us. We, we saw a 60% growth last year during the course of um, over a month, so that is from July to September, um, we had a 60% growth. And um, we also um, had about um, 478 plus rides, completed rides on our system, and 1,000 plus attempted bookings. So that is our traction so far. So our competitive edge we have is that we featured an integrated mobility, logistics, and e-commerce a platform that has a real-time tracking and personalized commerce. So um, our competitors, um, we have uh, both Oats and Uber and InDrive on the logistics side, while Jumia and Conga on He's the e-commerce side. So those are the major uh, competitors. So we know we our unique advantages include um, we're ready to give incentives to drivers, ready to expand, and there's a numerous demand for our services. Our revenue model includes subscription fee, transaction fee, and other uh, charges we include. So um, our market opportunities, um, is, um, Nigerian mobility and logistics e-commerce market is valued about at about $4.6 billion dollars in 2022, which has a 15% CAGR growth. Uh, our target audience includes urban commuters, businesses, online shoppers, and e-commerce platforms and logistics company. So we are also um, ready to tap into regions that have not been tapped by the major players in the market. The general market opportunity, which is in Africa, has a TMA of 25.8 billion, and which uh, we we know we increase in the near future for the way the African market is growing. So our team include um, the founder himself, Mr. Jubir Elams, um, our CEO, Mr. Richard, and our CEO, Ms. Maria Tusule, and I myself with Director of Operations. So this is my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Anaya. Um questions from the judges. So why um, we expect questions from the judges? Okay, okay. so quick one. Um, so that I can go. Okay. So I saw um, which, where, which um, state or city do you currently operate in? Because I saw the data, some exciting data and um, if this data uh, is anything to go by, how comes we've not, we've not um, he, um, we're just, I'm just hearing about you. Because some okay. of us, uh, you know, travel a lot, you know, and also I was just wondering which city and which state okay. you're operating. So, um, yes. we, okay, we that, lost last... Sorry? Yeah, this is the slide. Okay, that's... okay. go ahead. So we launched last year in Lagos, July. So most of our signed up are uh, mainly in Lagos. So that's where we had the traction of 60% um, growth from July to September, October. 
September. From September and October. Right, from July to September, October. So you say you have registered users. Yes. Um, that's three three K one hundred. That's plus drivers. No, um, the total registered users is three thousand one hundred plus. It's counting every day. It's increasing, and the drivers. The total number we have is um. Sorry, the number count we have is about two thousand five hundred plus. So total with um. Partners on generally is about seven thousand plus signed up. And how much have you made from that time to now? Okay, so um, uh, we've not really uh, quantified our ROI because of um, when we launched, we we made it a zero percent commission to actually see how the market reacts to our product and services. Okay, so for so it's free for all now. Yes, yes, uh, that's people. So both the okay, drivers, so, and the drivers are the major benefactor of this. That is the logistics drivers and both the um wide hailing drivers. Uh, okay, I, I, okay. So what? So, uh, but I, but my only concern is, so if yes, this is free, is if if this is free because currently right now, yes, um, uh, 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 bolts and the likes are are complaining. Uh, most yes. times in Lagos, I travel a lot, so I'm always in Lagos. That's what I'm saying. How comes I've not heard about this? And um, and because I'm always looking for cheaper right. options, I'm also looking for better options. So, yes, yes. Uh, even Lagos, right? Okay. Just listen, just listen. I'm driving the point. I've used Lagos, right? You know about Lagos, yes, right? right? Okay, cool. So, um, because if if you are because the what the drivers I, I engage these drivers all the time. I am even trying to understand if they're making money or not. So the problem has always been because most times the driver will say, Hey, don't pay me. Um, just just pay via transfer. You know, there's a lot of manipulation going on, saying the uh, the bank, uh, I mean, both is not they are not it's not profitable, they are not really making money, they are taking 20%, right? And yes, they are sir. not really making money, the fuel, the, the increase in fuel and all that. These are some of the issues. So um, I think if you have you if you are even trying to um, get information from your customers, right? You are you just allow and you can you know deduce based on the data you are going to generate and their experiences and whatever. I think this is the more reason why we should have more people, you know, coming out of. Um, uh, Bolt or whatever they are, they are currently operating platform they are currently operating in, you know, to move into your platform and make some money since it's um, you're not asking for anything for now. I, I'm just saying that if it's if you feel that okay, even if if it's real, if what you're saying is true, then I think you should capitalize on that because this problem is you know, I have one on one conversation with these guys all the time. Okay, so. You should drive, and then where I mean, even your social media, your marketing strategy is really. I've not seen anything about that's why I'm very critical about this because I've not seen anything about this. So, what have you been doing? Why are you quiet? I'm not, we've not heard about you. What What's really what's going on? Okay, so, um, initially, when we when we launched, we we had a big um marketing on using the radio ads, and over a period of time within the space of two months, we realized that um, we are having a more of a, a double S sword situation where we we have the drivers online, but um we having issues with them staying online. And um and this was due to the fact that they had so many options from different companies. So now we had the we had to like attract users to the to the platform. So in doing that, um it we 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 we, we notice that you that users complain about the quality, the same complaints about the quality of the drivers, the quality of the vehicles, and other things. So we we tend to battle with the same issues. The already um um established um, players in the market are already facing, which they have deep pockets to solve. So we came up with the strategy that um from for a, a a new um platform like us to be able to like survive in the 
in this um, particular market, we have to own vehicles of our own, not actually owning more, more like a contractual system where we get the vehicles for the driver. So we'll be able to control quality and also control the demand in terms of um, always have drivers available at every given time. So most of the drivers are in more than five platforms. So they switch from platforms to platforms. So a user might want to, to pick up um, a driver and he, when he logs online in his location, he will see no driver or the drivers are too far away. So those are most of the issues we face, the issue of um, not having drivers staying online. So we also use these drivers, which cost us a lot of money. Um, by um, per hour, we, we're giving some of them per hour as much as um, 200 naira per hour just to stay online, just as a way of encouragement. And it also didn't work because most of them will stay online, but they'll still decline rides. They give different reasons why they decline the ride. So I think the, at the end of the day, we found out that it's just to have a contractual system where you, you give them the vehicle, you contract the vehicle to them, then you can be able to control the quality and the, the market of, of your platform. So that's why we're trying to raise funds right now to actually tackle that issue. Hello, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you for the feedback. Theodore, I don't know whether you have any other questions for him. Yeah, the, the last thing you mentioned, are, are you saying, just for clarity's sake, yeah. are you saying you're trying to get the cars or, or, or maybe I didn't get you correctly? Yeah, we're trying to get um, a certain amount of fund so that we'll be able to either contract with one of the car companies because you need to have certain amount of funds at at a, as a at your disposal as a company to be able to do a contract with the company more like an insurance policy for the automobile company so they will give the drivers the vehicle um under your cover so that um the drivers then work with your platform and this will also help us to cover cost of uh, advert in the sense that the vehicles will be branded with the company logo and um, as they move around they will cover most of the cost of um, um, adverts and marketing wow well, well, that's that's very ambitious and uh, you know that, that that will take a lot of time that will take a while yes, sir, for you that. to achieve something like that because what what let me tell you what happened with with lagos right maybe you don't know or maybe you know but um it's a, it's in partnership with someone uh, somebody is it there's a startup who owns the technology and yes, then sir. government government is they are the ones who provided the cars you know it's easy for government to to secure deals like that government is they are the biggest spenders they have the money right so government provided for that first phase because it's 1000 pieces they provided both the saloon and the uh, mini suv those cars you see so um yeah so government is the biggest spender so they have the money there they can do you know things like that easily but for you going into um if you are going to source for that kind of partnership first of there are so many things i'll have to go even before um you'll be able to come to an agreement you know even the, if it's even if it's a funder a bank or whatever it is you have to bring in something you know how how that um so for safe landing and all that um so I'm just saying that um, you, you should uh, look at other alternatives. I think that um, instead of saying, okay, you want to, that's like the next thing you want to, you know, achieve now. How about the little things, low hanging fruit? Look at the streamline it. Look at it. How are these people getting it wrong? I mean, what are the things we need to do? Um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, you can keep that. That's a long term. How about the, uh, the short term uh, and the mid term, right? You know, look at all those things too, because that one before that one will happen, it might you the energy while. might just yeah, your energy might yeah. So look at what you got. You because you need to keep it being in business, you need to keep um uh, uh, you know things running, you need to keep doing what you're doing, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. So that's why we are more focused right now. Um team, we get a good source of funding. We are trying to build the um e-commerce sec uh, section of the app and um so far, we are having uh, both WhatsApp vendors and uh, um, store owners to register on those. And we we just started in Abuja about um, 
a week ago. So we want to focus the e-commerce section in Abuja and try to see what we can build from there gradually. And um, stay warm. I think that's the word. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Anaya. I hope you've taken the feedback. So we are going to move to the next person. If I powerful, powerful, are you ready? Yes, I am. Yeah, please start. Um, can I share my screen? Anaya. Yes. Anaya, you can put down your slide. Okay, thank you very much. Your time starts. Okay, I would like to start out from a personal experience. Um, this is my mom. She lives in Lagos, Nigeria, and she owns a cold storage business, um, selling frozen food products to people living within our community. 40% of our operating costs is spent on diesel generators. You and I know the Nigerian national grid is unreliable in supply and limited in supply. So because of these, businesses like her have been forced to seek alternative power sources. Now, she decided the logical thing for her to do was to go own solar assets, but almost all credit lenders she went to told her no. Now, that is the problem. 92% of businesses in Nigeria have no access to get any form of credit financing to own solar assets. Now, the reason for this is because 26% of are not guaranteed that after the money has been disbursed into the real economy, somehow they can get their money back. That's where Powerful comes in. We have built a digital infrastructure that collects loan repayments for financed energy assets. Now, when I talk about a digital infrastructure, what do I really mean? What I mean is a smart meter, a web application, and a wallet system on the mobile app. This digital infrastructure is designed to do just one thing. It helps credit lenders collect loan repayments that are scheduled, automated, and timely. So how does this work? Let's talk about the products. First, we install this smart meter to the solar assets after a loan has been disbursed. We then interconnect it to the wallet system on the mobile app that collects payments directly from the customer, and then we remit the payments back to the credit lenders. Now, I know you're sitting down there and you're wondering, what is the innovation here? The way we've built this product is that on a payment default, the wallet system triggers the smart meter to switch off electricity supply coming in from the solar assets to the business, basically encouraging the willingness to pay. Our model is winning. Our traction speaks for itself. We've been growing at 30% month on month since we launched in January 2023. At the moment, we have three signed commercial agreements 